Hello and welcome to the 3D printing workshop at IBM Hursley. And here are some Lego gears which were printed on an up 3D printer, the version 2, um, which I believe is printing another two the same. So can you tell us a few things about this printer? So have you seen the version 1 of the up? Uh, yeah, the new version has some uh, interesting feature. Uh, one thing is the uh, auto leveling function. Okay. It's using this small sensor. Basically, it's uh, just a micro switch. Right. That says it work like that. Yeah. Then it got a, a connector here and uh, connected to the equipment. Uh, if you want to do this using this auto leveling function, what okay. it did actually using this magnet is a powerful uh, magnet just attach to the uh, printer head right. then what you will do it automatically uh, push to the platform detect a few points like that right. to detect the, uh, the, the, the level of the platform then it's automatically to integrate them into their software so you don't need to adjust their uh, uh, bolt you know it's all, the software can compensate itself using this uh, automatic leveling function. Okay, so as it's printing, it's automatically moving Z up and down to yes, compensate for yes, the, the yes, bed. Wow, okay. The bed, yes. Okay, and it's and printing on um, some sort of perforated board. So, yeah, that's, this um, it's full of holes essentially. So the first layer is pushed down into the board, each sort of on a, on a raft. Is that right? So yes, it's quite smart. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. If you look at it from the side, you can see actually they yeah. push inside this uh, uh, this this board. Okay, so it's covered and in make prickles. It, yes, yeah. yeah, make it stick very very well. So during printing, never fail from this first layer. And uh, it's pretty easy to get rid of that as well. Right, okay. Uh, and and uh, is the bed heated as well? Uh, yeah, it's heated. Heat it. okay. uh, but for small component, actually, you don't need to heat it because, yeah. Right, and uh, is this printing in ABS or is it PLA? Uh, you can print both, but mostly uh, you print ABS. They, okay. They normally wow, okay. Print, provide ABS filament. Excellent. And um, can you tell us something about the software that comes with this? Yes, the software. Uh, here is the interface of software. Uh, it's uh, pretty good, uh, but it's not open, so you can't see the G code from that. Right. It got function like you know setup, calibrate, uh, auto level, nozzle height, detection, uh, print preview, print you know maintenance function like that. Okay, so it actually and gives you a, a 3D yeah. visualization as well. So yes. Yeah, yes. Like that's yeah. quite useful. Yes, you can copy, uh, no, uh, you can uh, uh, insert, say, uh, no, more copies if you want to print more. Okay. Yes, and uh, you can uh, move them or rotate if you want, say, uh, rotate through Y, so you can rotate that place, uh, well, automatically place on platform, or you can scale, say, if you want to make them bigger. You can just scale, say, two times. Okay. So, uh, scale, yes, it can scale up. And, the, again. and this just takes uh, normal STL files. Yes, yes. Same as you put into Slice or anything else. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Let's see how that print's doing. And what sort? Do you know what sort of uh, speed it's printing at? Uh, it looks fairly I'm quick. Not, yeah, quite quick. You, you've got three functions, speed functions. Uh, well, if you look at that, you can select a normal print or fast print or fine print. In a fine print, is pretty slow. Okay. Normally, uh, a normal print is so fine. That is so you can't actually specify the rate in millimeters no, per second. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, this sort of automatic. Yeah, the many things have been closed. You know, they, they didn't open this kind of thing. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Wow, sounds pretty good. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Right, what's in the box? Uh, this is our uh, Fidi filler print. Okay. And I bought a selection of the 10 meter wraps. So there's uh, 10 meters of each of the colors in here. Okie dokie. Some of which I've used. Um, so we've got some glow in the dark ABS. We've got some uh, galaxy blue. Wow. Standard galaxy blue. We've got some. Um, uh, Standard gold. Okay. Um, and this one, which is very interesting, which is the transparent ABS. Okay, and have you printed lots of things in these so far? Yeah, I have printed a few things. Okay. 
Uh, this is an example of the transparent ABS, okay, um, which comes out quite well. It's pretty tough. And it's quite stiff. Yeah. Whereas I've also got the bend lay, which is similar to uh, ABS in its qualities, the okay. same print temperature and stuff. Yeah. That, that prints something, um, this one here, so it looks very transparent but it's a lot more flexible. Oh wow, like a proper plastic cup. So this is the um, same thickness print, 0.8mm. Wow, uh, okay. nice, nice and flexible. Excellent. And we've also got some yeah. colour changing. So, Is it ABS? Yeah, um, we've got these three colours here. These are all ABS colours. Okay. And um, they all change colour like yeah. on there. So with heat? With heat. So that's uh, green at the bottom and green at the top but a darker green yeah and what's is that what that colour was, is that that was the grey which is oh green. okay so. so if you take it off it'll quite quickly cool back down again uh, yeah. and that's, that's purple to purple. pink really so if, uh, cool that one down it will start going the purple yeah uh, that's quite a difference between <laughs> the grey and the white yeah wow okay Maybe we'll come back in a couple of minutes and see those in different colours. We've also got some conductive ABS. Okay. So it's just black, but it's got some graphite graphite in it to make right. it. It's, it's very high resistance. It's no good for circuits, but um, we measured it, uh, and we reckon it will be useful for building something anti-static. So if you wanted to build a project box and you okay. wanted to give it some, you know, electric anti-static type okay. properties and ground something probably quite useful. I haven't printed anything like that yet, so that'll be uh, next. Right, so our white pot has now turned mostly grey, and some of this has gone darker green again. And that one, I guess, is still cooling down. Oh yeah, there we go. Hello, so you're assembling a 3D printer, and what sort of 3D printer is it? So this is a Mendel Prusa i3, okay. which is the third iteration of Joseph Prusa's uh, brilliant Reprac derivative. And the advantage of this particular kit is it's very simple. So it's based on uh, water cut aluminium alloy plates, just these two plates here. Okay, so they're actually cut with a water jet. So they're cut with a water jet rather than lasers, okay. or rather than a file. So it's nice and simple, everything's really precisely done. The other great advantage with this particular design is there are very few printed parts, so getting up and going is quite quick. I mean, what you see here is basically the entire frame. So you have one, one two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plastic printed parts. Okay, so those frame. are 3D printed, right. So and these um, are printed. Where did those come from? So these came from another RepRap printer, which is just over there. The lovely blue one with the lights. Hello, Mark. <laughs> Printed off these for me in uh, PLA, which is a nice, strong, easy to print plastic. Cool. And once you've finished assembling the frame, we'll build the X carriage and the extruder. There's two separate units, but we'll print those in ABS so that we can uh, handle higher temperatures. Okay, and what's your plan for the electronics? The electronics are initially going to be a rep for it, a standard electronics package, which is basically an Arduino, yeah. I forget exactly which one it is, with a ramp shield on top, and five stepper motor drivers, as you can see on top. Okay. But my ultimate aim is to redesign all this for custom using a Beagle board. Right, so but that's like a future a, project. It's like a Raspberry Pi, but it's a Beagle Better. with an operating system on. Indeedy. And that will mean what we can run hostless. So right now I'd have to basically plug my laptop or a printer host computer into the printer at all times. And I don't really want to dedicate a whole computer to this task. So I'm going to put all the printer control on the printer and then connect to it wirelessly. Okay, sounds good. And have you got a hot end lined up? I haven't got one yet, but I'm going to buy a J-head. Okay. And use the standard uh, Greg's Wade extruder type assembly. Okay, And then we'll see good. where we go from there. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's my own design. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I quite like the way it's gone. You get that sort of pattern yeah. there, which is quite interesting. Yeah. I'm now contacting you on Monday. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. I don't know how much. I have no idea of value. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, five yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, it's give me a five as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. And I can just print the numbers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, tell us about your Super Lamb Banana. So this is a uh, piece of artwork that I'm quite fond of from Liverpool where I went to university. It's done by a Japanese artist, I forget his name. Uh, but I got an app on my phone which can apparently do 3D scans using the, uh, the camera and take a series of photos around the part and it construct it into a 3D image. So uh, the thing I chose to scan was my uh, mini Super Lamb Banana. The real one's about 20 feet tall. Uh, and from that we got a fairly usable 3D scan of the part. Come back, Lamb Banana. There we go. Which we've then used to print these two pieces. Excellent. So one is much shinier than the other. So I did this one first in PLA. Uh, it's quite a small one. And then I did this one in ABS, which uh, we've done an acetone vapor smoothing process on. You can actually see that in our other video, maybe linked here. Yep, we'll put that in. <laughs> and is the app 123D Catch from uh, Autodesk? Yeah, the app is 123D Catch, uh, part of the 123 design series that Autodesk do. And uh, how much? On my iPhone, and it's free. And how much cleanup did you have to do on that model? Uh, quite a bit. You'll see there's the, uh, the floor here. I basically had to use Blender to take away all of that floor, uh, and then I used it to also trim the feet to be flat because my first attempt at printing failed, given that only one foot was on the ground and it was trying to then start the others later. Right. That was bad. <laughs> Super. And what are these other red parts that we've got here? So these should eventually, when I finish printing them, be all the parts required to make a Cerberus Delta-style printer, much like the one just sitting over there, which Mark is building. Yeah.